it's Madden NFL 23. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Hawks and the Bucks, and it comes your way next on EA Sports. Few better places in the country weather-wise this time of year than this one right here, Tampa, Florida, and beautiful Raymond James Stadium. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Seattle Seahawks and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Brandon Gordon, welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me as always, Charles Davis. And Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. Two teams that came into the NFL together back in 1976. The Seahawks and Bucks are underway. Fielded just outside the goal line. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Well, for a little bit we thought his story had concluded, but not to be. Here's Tom Brady in his 23rd NFL season, leading the Bucks offense out once again. And at one point, he announced to the NFL world that he had accomplished everything he needed to and was going to retire, but then reversed that decision. And I think everyone who likes football loves the fact that he's still out there throwing it around and still at the top of his game. In a career that's seen and accomplished just about everything, he figured there's always room to add to that legacy. So first and 10 now from the 30. To the air right away is Brady. Oh, he's going to air it out right away. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. That sun's going to be a factor all game long. I'm not sure it made a difference on that one, but it's something to think about on all deep throws during this time of year. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Fakes the give to Fournette. Now Brady. It's caught by Mike Evans. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Brady to Evans that time. First down Tampa. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. On first down, Brady. And he's going to have the hook up to Gage. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. From just shy of midfield, Brady. And Boyd has it over the middle. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. On 
on first and ten. Here's Brady. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. And they're going to move it down to inside the 25. That early game script that they drew up is working pretty well here on this first drive. Already in field goal range, Charles knocking on the door of the red zone. You know, Brandon, when we met with the coaching staff, they kind of predicted that they would come out firing like this. I think you and I were a little skeptical that it would be this easy, but they certainly knew what they were doing in scouting, in preparation, and understanding what their team was capable of. On the ground, this is Leonard Fournette. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down on second and right of the yard. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality, and pound the rock. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Again, it's Fournette. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to convert, albeit not by much, on third and a yard. Had a chance to maybe limit them to three if they could have gotten that stop there, but a new set of downs. And with a new set of downs, you got to take the mentality of the whole thing. Right now, everyone's looking at the offense and saying they've got the advantage. The best defenses just say, okay, new set of downs. It gives us another chance to make a play ourselves and maybe change things up. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Now they'll throw with Brady. And that throw behind his man, he missed him, incomplete. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test him early. But they proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Now back to throw. And he comes back with one complete. And the Buccaneers are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical, they've been crisp, and as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. Fournette. That sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. Look at this, a tight end carry. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? Brady now on third and goal. Godwin's got it. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. A great play there. There to make the grab. And the Buccaneers are on the board first here this afternoon. 
That was a big throw right there on third and goal. And the defense has to be prepared for you to throw the ball on third and goal. Because really, second down, second and goal, that's your play action time, and you're not sure whether they're going to run it or throw it. Third down, you're usually sure they're probably going to pass it. Even more impressive that they got it done. And on the opening drive of the game. Extra point up and good by Succo. And it's now a 7 nothing game. The Bucks ready for the kickoff. And here we go. It's in the air. Take it in at the three. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. As Seattle's offense comes onto the field, we'll see a 10-year veteran under center. Guy who broke into the league as a starter back in 2013, Geno Smith. As I remember back in 2013 when he was drafted out of West Virginia. He was coming off a of back-to-back 4,000-yard seasons for the Mountaineers. Hadn't seen as much game time in recent years, but at one point, a capable starter in the NFL. They'll run here with a rookie second round pick, Kenneth Walker. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Now Gino. Escaping the pressure right. Open man, that's Noah Fant, the tight end. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. Walker now at first and 10. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. A stop made defensively by Mike Edwards. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. They'll fake it. Now Smith. Man open downfield. It's Metcalf. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 30. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 30-yard line. Gino now to throw. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. On second down, it's Walker. A beautiful fake. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. 
A solid pickup at 13 sets him up first and goal. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. First and goal, and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. Throwing now is Geno. Flushed out right. And he finds Lockett in the end zone. Touchdown, Seattle. Eight yards on the touchdown pass. And the Seahawks are able to match the opening drive touchdown against them with one of their own. And the QB rating right now is sky high. Four for four on that opening drive, and it ends with a touchdown pass. Yeah, I don't know quite how to figure it out. I think I need my friends from MIT to come in and help me. <laughs> but I think 158.3 is the number one. Yep, that's the right? high That's mark. the highest you can get. That's where he is. He'd like to continue on that pace. Extra point up and through by Myers. And we are tied at seven. So that drives seven plays in length. And it ends with a Tyler Lockett touchdown. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 here as the kick's away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. The long drive last time out for this offense, Charles, if you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now, but let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. And this is going to be a Bucks first down as the tackle made at the 35-yard line. We often give credit to the O-line there. Two tight end formation. Those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll run it again with Fournette. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. They suspected it. it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Now Brady, over the middle complete, it's Evans. It'll be a gain of five, and now it's third and three. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter, he's gonna get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Brady finding Godwin there for a Buccaneer first. I know this may be jumping the gun a little bit, but 7-7, seven to seven, they're flinging it around like crazy. Look at the drive that's going on here. Partner, we may have to start thinking about one of these defenses just holding someone to a field goal and maybe trying to get advantage that way. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Inside handoff now to Fournette. And he's swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Let's do our 
And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Working from the gun, it's Brady. Throw right side, taken in by Godwin. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 38-yard line. He had the touchdown on the opening drive. Now he's got a first down. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass in the first drive and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill when they went through all the different situations ball hardly hit the ground and I thought yeah he might be locked in for this one Brady throwing complete here to Fournette and he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30 just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw and in this case that's exactly what he did found his running back let him create some space and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense Looking to throw again on second down. Brady. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 14. A busy first quarter. His third catch of the afternoon is a first down. Had the offense humming on the first drive. Not much has changed here on drive number two. No, and I think a lot of times confidence just really kicks in for a team. They may have been confident going into the game, but once you prove it on a drive, it's hard to get out of that mindset, isn't it? And look, let's face it, we can always lock in on the skill position, guys. But those big fellas up front, they're really making this offense go early in the game. Fournette, a first down carry. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. It'll be a nine-yard gain that time, but it'll also be the final play of this first quarter. 7-7, seven, seven, our score after one. Second quarter now in Tampa Bay. It's the Buccaneers in control of the football as they've got it with a second and one coming up. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. Tom Brady with a touchdown pass to Chris Godwin. And the Buccaneers have taken the lead. Well, that's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free. And his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. Extra point put through by Suckup, and that makes the score 14 to 7. So the drive goes 75 yards, 10 plays, and it's Chris Godwin who finishes things off for the touchdown reception. The box ready for the kickoff. And here we go. It's in the air. This will be fielded inside the five. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Out is their quarterback with this offense to take over once more. He was 4-4 on that opening drive, including the touchdown pass, as he'll try again here to duplicate that success, starting with the first down. Here's Smith. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, 
get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Throwing again on second down. Smith throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Oh! Well, he's pretty reliable. He usually catches what's thrown to him. On that play, he simply dropped it. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Back to throw, Smith. Open man is Metcalf, he's got it. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. So on third and medium, they dial up the pass and it works to hit the end zone. And it's really not a surprise to me. That's a throwing down in the NFL because of how tough it is to run the football. But what offenses like to do is still show run formations to make them respect it and throw out of those. In this case, they took a nice shot at the end zone and made it pay off. Now Myers for the extra point. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it's DK Metcalf who finishes things off with a touchdown reception. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Taken in at the three. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And right now we've got a little bit of an offensive masterpiece going on both sides, moving the football, scoring points. It's almost like somebody put the defense on rookie mode in this one. I mean, we haven't even left the first half, Charles, and we're certainly on pace for a shootout. An excellent start for both offenses. The fans have to be enjoying this to seeing all these points go up on the board. As a former defender, you know I'm not enjoying this at all, but right now, both these teams just trading haymakers. Let's see if anyone slips up first. Can anyone counter with a nice little jab and get things going in their direction? It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. A good gain on first has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. Up the gut, Fournette. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. With this size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. The Bucks on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. That's how you get right up off of the map, because on the last play, they stoned him in the backfield and dropped him for a loss. But he's the type of guy that scared me a little bit, because he's not daunted. Just got right back up, showed some confidence, and picked up a first down with his very next run. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Here's Brady to throw. And this is caught by Evans. 
give him a gain of five on the completion, and it's second down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose, and boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Here's second and five now from the 37. Fournette running out of the gun. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. 49 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. So a good run by Fournette. Now another first and ten. To throw is Brady. They'll swing this out to Fournette. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think get much more balance than this. Big time run. Big time pass. A one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. A good position to be in here. Second and inches. Now Brady. Over the middle to Adams. And he's going to be taken down at about the 33. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Brady now on first down. There's Evans again, complete. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. They go right back to him for 20 and a first. <laughs> I can't help but chuckle a little bit because at this point, it can't be a surprise to anyone in the building who's going to get the ball. They just keep feeding him over and over, and he just keeps on delivering. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Into the red zone, it's Brady. And he's got it. Touchdown! Tom Brady, his third touchdown pass of this first half. And the Bucs are going to take the lead. Well, just a sensational start for this offense, Charles. Three drives, three passing touchdowns. Is that like mentioning a perfect game in baseball? Are we cool to do it here in football, pardon? No, I think you can do it here in football. I think perfect game in baseball, that, that's its own category. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Could not imagine a worse start for that secondary, or let's face it, a better one for this offense. No chance they stop passing now the way that it's going. I think they'll continue to press the ball downfield and hopefully reap the same results. The Bucs ready for the kickoff. And here we go. It's in the air. Taken in at the three. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. A lot of time for this unit to game plan on the sideline after that drive that they watched the other side just score. But remember, last time they were out, they scored as well. We'll see if they can seize that momentum right back. 
and they have had a lot of time to cool off from reaching the end zone the last time. So have they been able to keep themselves mentally sharp and into this game, even though they haven't been on the field? And you and I both know, one big play, though, gets them right back up to that level. Now Gino on first down. Noah Fant with a catch on the crossing route. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones in a first down. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Play action. It's Smith. Going right back to Fant. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. The 26 big yards on that one. It's another first down. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam. Oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 32-yard line. Here's Smith. And he finds his target. It's Marquise Goodwin. And he'll be brought down at about the 23-yard line. Ahead of the chains now, second and two. Now here's a little touch pass as they tap it quickly to their receiver. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. And this is just a little touch pass. They send the receiver in motion, just kind of tap it forward to him. Now it doesn't turn into a huge play, but they do pick up a first down, a nice consistent gain. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Out of the gun, handoff to Dallas. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. It's a 10-yard gain there to set him up first and goal. Some big plays in the passing game on this drive, and here's one out of the running game. So the passing game loosening things up. Now there's room to roam. They scored touchdowns on drives one and two, and now they're trying to make it a perfect three for three to start. Now Smith. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. And the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it upfield, and that brings up second down. Well, he certainly didn't like what he saw at all from the coverage on his primary reads, and he didn't even have any luck trying to get back to his safety valve. Give defense a credit. Covered is in lockdown mode everywhere. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. Now it's Smith. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Geno Smith taking it in from seven yards away. And the Seahawks are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. These two teams in this first half, it's been fun. Back and forth, back and forth. Well, it's not fun for the defensive coordinators, but <laughs> offensive coordinators are enjoying it. Yeah, they're having streaks here, aren't they? Being able to put scores together and, and really bunch them up, and we have a tight game here. You know, we often talk about having the right shoes for the right turf. Today is track shoes. That's what we've seen with these offenses. <laughs> yeah, it's been an absolute track meet so far and fun to watch. Myers connects on the PAT. And we've got a tie game here in a back and forth first half. A 
A couple of teams locked into a good one here. 21 all the score as the kick's away. Fields it right around the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. We have seen a lot of points here in this quarter. For us up here in the booth, it's been fun to watch. The defensive coordinators probably scratching their heads. Yeah, they're going a little bit crazy right now. But let's face it, all of our friends who play fantasy, <laughs> they're enjoying the heck out of this show because most of them are creating and getting a bunch of points. Yeah, points certainly not at a premium here. And Brady and the Buccaneers here first and 10 at their own 23. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And Brate, the tight end's got it. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. From the 29, Brady. And his throw here is incomplete. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. A dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. From the gun on third down, Brady. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started, and that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty, and before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. And as the offense begins another drive here, uh, pretty simple, Charles. They want to carbon copy what happened the last time out when they ended their drive in the end zone. You're right about that, partner. It sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Just score again, but we know it's not that simple because we don't just make adjustments at halftime if you're a good football team. You spend that time on the sideline, you study what's on the notes and the tablets, and you make those adjustments to prevent a repeat of the last drive. Series to series, the best teams, that's how they get it done. And we'll find out here soon enough whether those adjustments are enough defensively. The result, only four yards there on the play, and it'll be second down. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way, and really we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. From the 40 now on second down, Smith. And he can't get rid of it, he's taken down. They push him back eight yards that time on second down. But that's what they have to do more defensively, not just getting sacks. We have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been coughing him up previously. Yeah, he has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few glass stains on that jersey. Now a tough spot for Geno Smith and company after the sack. It's third and long. Now Geno. That's complete to a speedy wideout Goodwin. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. They'll fake the handoff. Now Smith. And that's incomplete. Really good coverage all over the field. It took away his intended read and almost dared him to try for his guy out of the backfield. No surprise on that one. It doesn't connect. Okay, 
Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. Throwing now is Geno. He'll lock it with a grab over the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? They not any of them, especially if it's a good receiver. That makes things very difficult. But when you're running a track route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Coming up here, looking for three yards to pick up the first. Again, Smith. He completes this to Walker. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover it before he gets going. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Gino now to throw. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. And he'll be brought down at about the 23-yard line. When you get a big tight end like this, sometimes it takes more than one man to bring him down. Oftentimes, your best bet, just jump on and hold on and wait for your teammates to arrive to help get him on the ground. Smith throwing again. This is the tight end fan. And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Only needing two yards on second down. To throw is Smith. That's complete, right around the eight. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Now the Seahawks gonna use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. This offense continues to be a hot knife through butter. Three drives, three scores, and knocking on the door again on drive number four. They'll set up the screen to Dallas. And he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. Now another timeout called for by the offense as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. of scrimmage once again the five as they get ready for second and goal to the air again Smith being chased out and he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes Joe Tryon Shoyinka showcasing the pass rush second goal last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack but he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football had to eat it and ended up on the ground at the 16 now after the sack here's third and goal and pressure coming and they got him once again 
Vita Vea breaking through to get the sack. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. From the left hash, this from 39. Myers' kick is good, and that will do it for this first half. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we send you a stone's throw away across I-4 to Orlando. There standing by is Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. First up, though, let's run through the next-gen stats for the Seahawks in that first half. And it's been the passing game that's been the story. They have feasted on this secondary to the tune of 200 plus yards already through two quarters. Okay, coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Seahawks with the advantage, and they get the football first as the second half is underway. DJ Dallas to return it from his end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. The Seahawks offense set to go to begin this third quarter. As this offense takes the field to begin the opening drive of the second half, Charles, remember that first half, good through the air and really all around an outstanding offensive performance. Absolutely. They reached the end zone several times. The passing game working awfully well and most importantly, partner. Yeah, they went to the tunnel with a the lead. They come back out with that lead. Absolutely. NFL coaches, we know they're perfectionists in a lot of ways, but they had to like what they saw in that first half. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Akeem Hicks that time on the tackle. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. Smith now to throw. He hits his target, lock it. And they're gonna get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. That one good for 26 and a first down. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field, and here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. Throwing is Smith. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to bring up second down. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. 
So back-to-back -back plays each get nothing. And it brings up third and five now. Brandon, yeah, just mark that into the category of just not successful. Trying to throw the ball, just didn't work on that one. Completed it. No yards. And the box with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Throwing again is Smith. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one. Close quickly. And he'll force the incompletion. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. Brady and the Bucks now with a first and 10 at their own 12-yard line. Now he'll begin with a give to Fournette to start the drive and able to get it across the 20 before they get to him. 61 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've rung the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. Throwing on first down is Brady. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A well-executed 22-yard gain. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Here's Brady. He's got a man. It's his tight end. That's complete. And they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", 6'5", and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And they get Tristan Warts, first-round pick in 2020. Now after the false start, here's second and seven. Brady now to throw. And he's going to have the hook up to Gage. And that will wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 42. Brady to Gage for a Tampa first. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. A handoff to Fournette. And he's going to be down at the 35, gain of seven. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Now Brady. He's got Otten. 
And they'll work this down inside the 30. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Brady now on first down. Over the middle, he finds Godwin complete. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. And he's certainly been a huge factor in this when he's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again, he picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him? Double him, triple him, do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection, it doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. To throw is Brady. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. The fourth touchdown pass of the game for Tom Brady. And the Bucs go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points. So a very strong first drive in the second half, Charles, as they turn that halftime deficit into a third quarter lead. And they were pretty purposeful there, weren't they? Measured in their approach. But boy, they executed awfully well moving the ball down the field. Suck up for the extra point. And that will make this a four-point game. So that drive goes eight plays. And it's Mike Evans who caps it with a touchdown reception. The Bucs ready for the kickoff. And here we go. It's in the air. Taking it about the one. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Smith on first down. Steps away to his left. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. That one goes for 24 yards. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Now Smith. That's complete to his running back, Dallas. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll bring up second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal game. Oh, they're going to run a little pop pass here. And he is going to lose yardage here. The 
Bucks with an extra defender now in the secondary here on third down. Now it's Smith. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Vita Vea picks up his second sack of the afternoon. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback has now received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll kick it away for the second time. This is brought in at the 21. That'll go as a 39-yard punt. Give him nine on the return. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Tom Brady leads the offense out for their next possession. And the numbers for the last drive, and he was perfect, which maybe isn't surprising because he has not missed a pass in this game yet. And it lets you know just how precise things have to be for a quarterback to be perfect because that means the line's blocking really well, no one's dropping any of the passes thrown to them, and the quarterback is accurate. It's almost like a pitcher throwing a no-hitter or a perfect game, isn't it? He's the principal guy, but he needs a lot of help. Time to find out if he can keep that perfect game going here, partner. Well, that throw by Brady incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. On the draw, this is Fournette. Oh, he shifts past him. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, Force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Throwing is Brady on third down. Looking left side, he's got it complete. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Whenever we talk about moving the sticks and controlling the football, there's a great example right there. Those are the third downs you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball away from the other team and put points on the board, those are the plays they need to continue to convert. On first and ten, here's Brady. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And they're going to get this up to midfield. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time you wait for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Here's a give to Fournette, and he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. That one is blown up by Jordan Brooks, the linebacker. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty, but when it does it, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. Now Brady. He'll set up the screen to Fournette. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. 
Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Brady going to throw. And that nearly the pick that they needed. He couldn't pull it in, though, and it's fourth down. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt, and this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot, and this will stay a four-point game. Well, Brandon, anything beyond 50, you start rolling the dice a bit. And once you get up around 57, 58 yards, the chances of making it go down dramatically. And sure enough, this one winds up no good. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Two sides to every coin. This is the bad side of missing the 58-yarder. Now they start at the 48. Off of play action. Here's Smith. Man open. It's Goodwin. And he's going to be marked down just inside the 35. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They'll fake it. Now Smith. Eluding the pressure right. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. At least this time he's getting hit after a positive play for his offense. The pressure was coming through yet again, but he certainly didn't stick around for the sack on this occasion. Found an escape route and ended up getting the first down before taking the hit. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and 10. From the red zone now, Smith. He'll find Metcalf. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. And we've seen him have success earlier on with the ball in his hands because he is a get it in space and make a play kind of a receiver. But that time, they closed on him quickly and held him to a short game. Running right, here's Walker. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up a first and goal. It'll be first and goal when we come back. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. It's the Seahawks with possession of the football, but they do trail here to begin quarter number four. Throwing now is Geno. And this one too low. I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch. Is the arm there? Are the legs still there? This has been a tough game. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. Now a draw play. It's Walker. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. 
Ken Walker. An eight-yard touchdown run. And the Seahawks have taken a fourth-quarter lead. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up. Meaning, when you get on a guy, you just stay right there. And each guy has his own assignment that allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. Extra point up and through by Myers. And that gives him a three-point lead. A drive that time of six plays. And it was all capped off by a touchdown run from the rookie, Kenneth Walker. the touchdown here's Myers to boot it away Darden now going to bring this one out of the end zone and he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21 yard line so out come the Bucks now we certainly have a good one on our hands they're trailing after that last touchdown but now a chance for this offense to try to snag that lead right back here in the fourth quarter Few better down a score in the fourth quarter than Tom Brady. This is first and ten. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Now we're going to get a timeout here as it looks like there's a Seahawk injured on the play. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. A shotgun give to Fournette. Oh, he faked it with a juke. Now he's got some room. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 84 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Throwing now is Brady. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. They'll set up to throw. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. To get him 17 yards that time is how to move the chains. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Brady. And Brady, the tight end's got it. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Let's go, let's go. 
On second down, here's Fournette. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sift through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. From here, it would be a 45-yard field goal attempt, certainly in range, but they'll look for more yardage on third down. Working from the gun, it's Brady. And that is incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no game. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. And this will be a 45-yard attempt. Suckup's kick is good. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. So he missed his first attempt, remember, but this time he gets back on the bike and knocks it home. Yeah, and sometimes that first one can really impact you moving forward. It can just stay with you too long and affect everything else you do during the game. In this case, though, able to shake it off. He's riding high again. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. Fields it right around the goal line. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And we essentially have a brand new ball game. After that last field goal has tied us all up, we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter. Start out here with a jet sweep. And he's taken down. It's a gain of three from the 17 to the 20. Well, they gave up a few yards there, but all in all, I think it's a pretty nice job defensively against the jet sweep. If they don't slow him up, he might take it to the house. So they'll take that play every time on the defensive side of the ball. Second and seven from the 20. Toss left side for Walker. Gets past one man. And he'll take this to about the 24, a gain of three. I would say that's what you call a whole lot for a little, huh? When you bust that move out of the bag, you hope for more than four yards, but hey, four's what he got. The Seahawks on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. Here it's third and three to throw with Smith. Fighting his safety valve here. That's complete. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. Only able to gain a couple there. And now bring up fourth down. Look at this. This is pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield. Forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. Call that a 45-yard punt, just two yards there on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Mike Evans and the rest of the offensive unit heading back out there now. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Brady now on first down. Left side here, that's complete to Godwin. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars. And he came through with a nice catch right there. Oh, 
So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Now Brady. Right back to Chris Godwin. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. From the 39, Brady underneath. He's got Brady, and they'll work this down inside the 30. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. Now Leonard Fournette. Jordan Brooks on the tackle. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Now Brady. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Evans. Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Brady now to throw. Gets it out quick. It's Gage on the slam. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. Going on reliable there to the slot on third down. And the slot position has become the bane of just about every defense's existence because how do you cover? You go with the bigger guy to try and use size, you go with a, try go with the quicker guy, and sometimes you even get out quick there. Very difficult to match up with that slot receiver. That's why they keep going back to him. And he's had the hot hand. Into the red zone, it's Brady. Touchdown! Five touchdown passes now for Tom Brady. And the Buccaneers have broken this deadlock and have taken the lead here in the fourth. A nice connection there, finding his target, and that'll put six up on the board. Just like they drew it up in their playbook and reiterated it on the sidelines, right? Perfect round, a good throw in the defense. They had no answer for that right there. Extra point try now for Saka. And they will take a seven-point lead now. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Taking it about the one. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. They now trail by seven after that last touchdown here in the fourth quarter. What a big spot for this offense. See if they can cobble something together on this drive. First and 10, Smith. That's complete to a speedy wideout, Goodwin. 
And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. This is the tight end fan. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Up the middle they run, it's Walker. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync. And the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Geno now to throw. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted. Thrown back across his body. Picked up by Jamel Dean. And the Buccaneers are going to take possession of the football. Partner, I think this will want to arrive very simply because he overestimated his arm strength and his ability to fit it anywhere he wants to. A lot of quarterbacks do that and often pay the price. The Tampa Bay offense set to go again. Another important fourth quarter series coming up. That last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. Fournette and he'll lose yardage here back at the 47 hit and drop behind the line by Shelby Harris got to figure now after getting that turnover they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground right this is where covering the football taking care of the ball all the ball security terms that have ever been used they come into play for the guys on offense right now just take care of it and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Again, it's Fournette. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Three yards on the pickup there, and they've got it back to third and 10. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. To throw is Brady. A pass underneath for Fournette. And he'll be hauled down at about the 30-yard line. Big hook up there. Forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's Brady. Underneath, he's got Brady. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. Fournette. 
And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. Now the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. As big of a play as we've had in this one so far. This is third and three. To throw, it's Brady. Open man is Godwin, it's complete. And he is going to have a box first down, and he was able to get it by play. A gain of eight on third and three. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Now Fournette. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he's in. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Leonard Fournette punching it in from a yard away. And the Bucs have opened up a two-touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. So he had the nice run to get him down there, was stopped just short of the goal line, but they go right back to him, CD, and he delivers to finish the drive off. A little extra determination there, don't you think, partner? You notice he didn't tap on his helmet and say, get me out after the run down to the end zone. He said, I almost got in. I'm going to get in on my own. I'm staying in, and he carries it across the goal line. Suck up for the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And the man who finished it off with a run into the end zone, Leonard Fournette. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Dallas now to return it from his end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. So all eyes on this Seahawks offense. Down on the scoreboard. And time, a huge factor. Field goals, useless at this point. They need two touchdowns, and they need them in short order. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Give it big credit for his coverage right there because when he saw the route break deep, he stayed in position to prevent a completion while avoiding any risk of a flag. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. Now Gino. That's complete to Eskridge. 
Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Smith now to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown. But this game's over. Desperation time for Smith on fourth down. Open man is Metcalf. He's got it. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as this defense, boy, a little too loose there. They give up a gain of 19 on fourth down. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Smith throwing again. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. Five yards, now it's third and five. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course, you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. Going for the deep ball. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will land up incomplete. When you're leading in the final quarter, your radar has to be up for any potential deep shots. And probably not the last one they're going to see in this game, not as long as they hold this lead. On fourth down, Smith toward the sideline. He will have the first down. Good catch. He was able to keep the feet in bounds. They're able to keep the drive alive. Seven yards that time, and the decision to go for it proves to be a good one. And now it appears that the referee's been buzzed, and we'll get a review. And this being inside two minutes of play, everything coming from up above. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the folks in New York just going to wind up confirming what the official saw as this play will stand as is. So this offense able to convert on fourth, and now a fresh set of downs here, first and ten. To the air again, Smith. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. It's Devin White, the linebacker, and the Bucs are going to get the football here at their own 23. Well, it wasn't always pretty, but the interception there, that means that they should get out of here with a victory. Yeah, this is not a game that they're going to preserve for posterity on defense, but they did finish it off, didn't they? They did make the winning play to close things out. They'll take that one and head to the locker room.
Victory formation now for the Buccaneers. Down to a knee they go. And with just inside of 10 seconds to go, they'll burn their final timeout. Nine seconds left. Brady will take a knee here, and that should just about do it. The title has a lot of happy faces heading into the title as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And Paul, I have no idea what the top speed is on one of those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish.